um, cohomology theories. So uh, Kuran, I've worked with Kuran some on um, uh, applications of uh, uh, piatic cohomologies to uh, computing zeta functions of varieties over finite fields. And in general, I think it would be nice to have uh, an easy access uh, within SAGE to various cohomology theories and having uh, the notation that's used within SAGE line up with the mathematical notation. <laughs> so you can just type in H2 of blah, gal L over K and get the Brouwer group. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Um, uh, we've, I've been hearing for the past hour about uh, piatic L functions, and zeta functions, and various special functions that you might want to compute. Um, piatic analogs of trace formula. Um, if anybody else has, uh, I mean, more applications, more objects you want to com compute, I think it would be nice to start a, just a list of things that we want to get into Sage eventually. I just want to do algebraic number theory and map things down to completion. Yeah, so that's a, on another slide as more a, a tool, but yes, um, completions. Um, defined things in neighborhoods. Yeah, so another thing, to test local solvability. Excuse Yeah, maybe I should go on to the next slide because I have kind of some other ones. I, I had too many for one slide. Um, <laughs> So, the question marks on every slide. <laughs> well, no, just on these two. Um, so, piatic heights of points on elliptic curves, um, uh, piatic differential equations, um, quadratic forms, which is kind of local solubility of, of uh, representability of quadratic forms or solubility of yeah, schemes. You're probably also on stupid algorithms for general schemes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, so brainstorming. If anybody has some stuff right now, um, I'd like to hear about. What would you like to see piatics and sage applied to? But that's more of a tool, and it's not very complicated. Uh, it's our algebra as a that's that's not that's not the complicated. Just a direct problem. Do we have that in the global case? No, we should. We should. Something that deals with that. Beyond tracking the Hausman's rule, you can imagine that have representations for Brower groups that... You know, that's usually not so hard. I mean, even, well, if they're cyclical, you can usually, like, like returning algebra, for example, yeah. you can write down explicitly in terms of, as, as Brower elements of functions, you know, right? So then, in particular, we need division algebras over the PX. <laughs> so, again, also, we also need those globally. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is true, and this is something I hadn't thought about, so that's uh There's not much non-commutative in the SAGE right now, is there? Not right now. Mm -mm. Except for the little bit that comes from singular. And also, um, David Cole's yeah, general so free algebras that, yeah. and their quotients and stuff, but you, that's not that powerful, it's just yeah. sort of infrastructure. There's, quite, there's a lot of quaternion, I mean, there's more quaternion yeah. algebras than you expect. At least. Yeah. Uh, multiplicative groups and quotients of multiplicative groups. It's also not complicated. So this is just for GM and yep. over the piatics. Over a cube. And and GM on squares, on cubes. Take curves. Actually, yeah, take curves and but more generally, um, 
periodic uniformizations of abelian varieties with purely toric reduction. How will we for sort of uh, standard piatic analytic functions like Art and Haas exponential and, and, and huh. is that stuff? Do we have all that stuff in Paris? Or? I think there's like a piatic gamma function. That was my comment too. Yeah. The piatic gamma function and yeah. another is in Zaman. It's just got to be yes. Everything is single polygonal algorithms, multi polygonal algorithms. You know, all the functions that one might uh, yeah. use I think would be good to have nicely implemented with. Good precision balance as well, so yeah. Sure yeah. That should probably be a higher pr priority than most of the things we've discussed because it's sort of basic infrastructure that Piatic should have well supported. Yeah, I mean, XBIN log are, are there for the base rings. Um, Arden has XBIN, Arden has the log or not, though. I think I wrote the functions down somewhere. And also, theoretic doubt detection, linear, linear relation detection, the Piatic through arch death, but does it actually have? A, like a way to detect integer relations between, between any set of periodic numbers, not just all the happening in front of the first few numbers? Well, after you come in, uh, no, I'm going to try it. My version of GP, which may be old, and Arch works, but not in depth. Well, there is a in depth. There is a in depth for yeah. more complex numbers, but in depth, Arch depth is supposed to be based on in depth, yeah. but if you run Arch depth periodic, <laughs> it works, but not in depth. So Arch step should call in depth coming down. Linda calls L L step. No, but that's just for one number. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about yeah. many, many calls. Yeah, that should exist. Did you already say something, something about like piatically stable linear algebra, like numerically stable linear algebra? Uh, not yet. Okay, that's coming. That's coming. All right, so let's move on. Um, but if you think of more later, uh, I'd like to hear about. So. Uh, we're now on to the sections of what do we need to do in order to get all this done. So we've got a, a bunch of objectives. Um, so what uh, infrastructure do we need to build up? Well, the first and most obvious one is we need to get, we have QP base ring and field, um, and we need extensions. Um, there was code in there that almost had extensions working in June, and then I stopped working on stuff for three months. Um, but I'm back to trying to get it working now. Um, and hopefully that will be there pretty soon. Um, so we'll have uh, special types for unramified extensions of QP, Eisenstein extensions of QP, uh, so that we can take advantage of, of uh, NTL's arithmetic there. Uh, general uh, e extensions of QP that will break down into a two-step extension, first the unramified and then a totally ramified part. Uh, and then general relative extensions. Um, uh, Krasner's lemma will be used to, to, to figure out whether the polynomial the user gives you is enough to uniquely determine the field, and depending, there'll be a flag that the user can control, which complains to them if it's not uniquely defined. Um, and eventually, we'll need a version of round four, either getting Paris to expose a little bit more of some of the internal of one of their round four implementation, or getting Sebastian to write us one. So what's round four? Round four is a factorization algorithm for polynomials over the piatics, oh. um, and in particular, if you give it an irreducible uh, polynomial, it will find it on it'll split it into an unramified extension and a totally ramified extension, um, because the way it factors is it kind of builds up a. Um, well, if it can do Hensel lifting, it, that's great. Otherwise, it, you can express it as some irreducible polynomial, some polynomial which uh, is irreducible over the um, finite field to some power, and then you raise your precision. So uh, the underlying arithmetic for these extensions will be done using NTL. Um, and It's almost as if the NTL classes were designed for this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when P is large, then yeah. P is three, I don't know. So. We'll see. Yeah. But 
So wait, um, is P really a, pro a power of P? P is really a power of P. Yeah, that's yeah. the funny thing with NTL, is P doesn't have to be a prime. And, and, <laughs> and they're, this ZZPE, they kind of intend to be a finite field. Uh -huh. But, but it, it doesn't have, so P doesn't have to be prime, and the polynomial doesn't have to be irreducible. So, nice. Um, you think that's something to keep in mind. You probably want to talk to David Cohell about that, because for small p, uh, some people are really interested in having highly optimized versions for... You mean like, you mean like p equals 2? <laughs> yeah. Or, or not yeah. just p equals 2? <laughs> yeah. Well, for p equals 2, NTL is a special class. Um, for p equals 3 and 5, I don't... I, I know in, in MAMA they put an insane amount of work in getting uh, p is 2 really optimized. Yeah. So, David, do you know how NTL, NTL is not very good for small p? No, I just, I just mean if p equals 3, it does the same. I mean, you know, if you're using um, the little ZZP, which is for word size modulus, it's using exactly the same code for p equals 3 as it is for p equals, uh, what is it, 19 billion. <coughs> Um, so you should use little z's for so small pieces. It's just, it's just, it's just not going to be that efficient. Um, and, and also just the representation of, of small fields, like say rep, if you want to represent a field of order 3 to the 5, it's representing them as polynomials of, of degree 4 or less minus 3, and it's just not efficient. Mm. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's the issue for stage at the moment. Like we've, we've got to do this. And I think structurally that has to be done first, and then different implementations can be created mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. We can spend an insane amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Making it faster. Yep. Um, have a general thing that works first. Exactly. Um, and I think after talking to Niels last Next night, uh, for the general extension, the general relative extension, uh, the, each element will have two fields in it. One, at a polynomial over, if you have L over K, it'll store it as a polynomial over, over K in the variable x that the user defined it as, and it will also store it in, as an absolute extension over qp and split it up into this two-step extension. Um, and when you, you only fill in each of those fields when you need to. So if the user casts it, cast it in, it fills in the relative version. Um, otherwise, it, uh, when you are doing arithmetic, it doesn't fill in the relative version, it just fills in the other one. All right, next. Completions, as uh, somebody mentioned earlier. Um, once we have the rest of this going, completions will be really easy. But it should be trivial and sage to take a global number field and just say complete at a specific prime, specific place, list of all completions. You should be able to take elements of that number field and cast them into that completion totally transparently. You should be able to coerce from there so that if you have something in the completion and you add 5 to it, it works. You add 5 plus the square root of 2 to it, it works. Um, so bas basically, a completion will just be a pair, which is a, a local field, and then um, mm -hmm. a map from the local field. Um, polynomials. Um, so this should be special classes uh, to over QP and over the unramified and totally ramified extensions of QP. Um, because there we can use NTL directly. Um, otherwise, we can use just Sage polynomials, but there are some issues with precision we need to think about. Um, in particular, uh, if you have some polynomial over the p-addicts, you can say the simplest thing to do is just all of the, all of the coefficients have absolute precision some fixed value. Um, so you're working in practice in the ring z mod p to the n adjoint x. But you might want to have the coefficients of your polynomial have different precisions. So we saw in William's talk um, a power series where the first coefficient had a big O of p to the seventh, the second coefficient had a big O of p to the fourth. And so you want to be able to represent these power series, or these polynomials as well. Uh, where the coefficients have varying precisions. 
And when you do that, you need to then um, think about how that precision information is carried through with arithmetic. And this is not so bad with polynomials, it gets a lot harder with matrices. But I'd like to have conversations with people about uh, what good things to think about that are. So linear algebra, uh, there's lots of linear algebra operations we need to be able to do. Determinants, traces, kernels, characteristic and minimal polynomials um, come to mind. But there are plenty of other ones you want to do on matrices. Uh, as I mentioned at the bottom, these need to, we need to be using numerically stable algorithms in order to do this because uh, just like with matrices over the reals, you have precision issues if you yeah, just naively apply. Yeah, when you say harder than here, I mean, this is, PI is a lot easier than real and complex. It's yes. <laughs> but harder than the integers, for example, <laughs> precision ones. Harder than an exact ring. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, Yeah, in that you actually have to worry about precision as opposed to just doing arithmetic. You know? So, in in a way, you can always just say you're working in z mod p to the n. Unless you have the, the coefficients yeah. have, unless you, the entries of your matrix have different precision. In which case, yeah. You when can. you take characteristic polynomial of a matrix, it's quite it's quite common that that the natural precision of natural precisions you get mm -hmm. are are different. It's yeah. it's are, are, okay, yeah. I mean, if you have some, if you have some, if you know some divisibility in the matrix yeah. already, it's quite often that you know later coefficients will have more <laughs> position, and you want to remember that. Or at least I want to remember that for yeah. my applications. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the precision of the, on the entries of the matrix can vary, um, yeah. and it may vary predictably. It may just be that it's mm -hmm. going up, kind of yeah. linearly sloping up. Yeah. Um, uh, and you should be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, or a tip, another typical thing is that you have some, like for well, for a polynomial, a typical thing is that you have some. Uh, it has some Newton polygon, yeah. and you get what you have is several digits on top of that. Sure. So, mm -hmm. the, so the line of precisions is kind of sh the Newton polygon shifted up a bit. Just a relative precision. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's 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 the case where all the all the coefficients have the same relative precision, but you would be throwing away information if you. Absolute if you went to absolute precision. So in particular, uh, I've been thinking about trying to come up with algorithms for determinants and characteristic polynomials that uh, basically separate the figuring out what the answer is and figuring out what the precision is. Um, and there's some techniques you can apply from network flow, which are kind of amusing. Well, there's also more straightforward things that maybe aren't optimal, but at least give you yes. Yeah, no, there, there are certainly things you can do that, that give you a lower and upper bounds on the precision. Anyway, th there should be a conversation about this involving yeah. at least the two of us. <laughs> and, and other people are interested. Um, and maybe it's worth mentioning that Magma is definitely not using numerically stable algorithms. Um, <laughs> what is it doing? I think it's doing generic algorithms yeah. for yeah. Yeah. these things. When, yeah. uh, when a Damien Staley was there, he asked him about so linear algebra with the reals. He's like, well, if, if anybody claims to be doing it in an numerically stable way, they're lying to you because the theoretical problem, <laughs> you know, in some sense that it, you can obviously come up with pathological examples like Hilbert matrices and such. Yeah. Pathological examples such as what? I mean, you, you, you have standard examples like Hilbert matrices, which yeah. um, just are, are going to be numerically unstable. So. On a Right, but you can quantify that. Yes. They have horrible condition numbers. Mm -hmm. well exactly. Do the these two be cross touch examples be added? I don't know. Um, I can discuss that. Yeah. I don't know new, much numerical analysis or numerical stability stuff, so I'd be happy to talk to people about this later. Um, also, in addition just to just explicitly working with matrices, uh, we want to have modules and vector spaces over uh, p-adic rings and fields. And what does it mean to change basis when your when your entries in your vector all have different precisions on their coefficients? That seems a little strange. Um, so, does it only make sense to have vector spaces which 
have fixed absolute precision? Is there any meaning that you can attach to having different, in like, anyway, that's something to think about. Um, power series, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff that, um, has, that I've done with Piatics can just go over and directly do with power series. Power series are easier. Um, uh, when you have power series over the Piatics, then you can Im impose uh, more interesting uh, precision restrictions just like with power, multivariate power series, uh, where you have the, the precision of the piatic precision and the power series precision tied in in various ways. So why do you say that power series are easier? Um, because you don't have to worry about um, P carrying over. Just the arithmetic is easier. Um, is that actually true on the operational level? I mean, you. For the piatics, I mean, the, the, arithmetic, the underlying arithmetic is just integer sure. arithmetic. Yeah, so for power series, the underlying arithmetic is just going to be polynomial arithmetic. Right, but I mean, in some so sense, the way you do, I mean, it doesn't at, at the asymptotic <laughs> level, how do you do power series arithmetic? You convert it into integer arithmetic. Yeah. Uh, this is, the, the easier is, um, I guess, doesn't really have any particular mathematical meaning. And then GMP sends the integer arithmetic back in the following way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is that true? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Alan still loves to do things where he turns things in your characteristic zero through polynomial and turn into Germany. <laughs> um, in particular, I think it's probably fast enough to, to continue implementing power series as just a sage polynomial. Um, I, don't, I don't know, eventually make go and wrap. TL directly, but um, you can improve. Um, maybe in some cases the polynomial arithmetic functions to not compute extra terms that aren't going to be needed. Yeah, so the multiply I know that often that stuff. doesn't make sense, but sometimes it does. Um, but at least multiply and truncate could be done as one operation. Yeah, in, I mean for a polynomial. Has multiply and truncate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that should go into polynomial mm -hmm. code. I think what it does is it multiplies and then it truncates. I think that's what it does. Yeah. But even then, I mean, doing it but directly in the library is better. But that could be a change, right? Yeah. Possibly, sometime in the future. Um, also, there are a lot of rings that uh, come up that have um, piatic power series in various interesting conditions on the valuations of the coefficients as you go off into infinity in various directions. So. Implementing those kinds of rings would be nice. Dagger algebras. Dagger algebras, exactly. Tate algebras. And the extension co uh, extensions for the power series? Extensions for power series, yeah. Um, so I, I should say that uh, I'm probably not going to get around to this for yeah. a long time. So if anyone else cares about power series, talk to me and I can. Yeah, I mean, this is actually, I mean, power series and piatic are quite important for things like piatic cohomology. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, you, you, in fact, you're quite commonly using these power series over piatics with some kind of sloped mm -hmm. precision restriction. Yeah. So. Um, so current status. Um, the base classes uh, are generally in fairly good shape, though. Uh, the, so there are four different types of precision handling in Sage. Uh, there, so you can have, look at the relative precision of an element, which is the precision of the unit part, or the absolute precision, which is just big O of P to the K. The K there is the absolute precision. Um, and uh, then there's a lazy class, which uh, you can do computations with, and then uh, get a result, and later, and decide you want more precision on that result and just ask, ask it for more precision, and it automatically goes back and um, determines what it needs to know in order to get more precision out. Um, and the code for that is needs work, needs stock tests, and it probably has bugs. So um. There's now an option, sage space dash coverage. You give it a PY file as input, and it gives you back the score about how many doc tests are. Your code fails miserably. <laughs> <laughs> there, I have doc tests um, that uh, Matt Ince wrote this summer. Excellent. That I haven't submitted. Uh, Excellent. But yeah, I believe it. I need to make sure the testing for chaotic stuff doesn't um, rely on 
um, say, Parry, for example, giving correct answers. Um, there's a general consensus that chaotics in all computer algebra systems are broken. Yes. And we need to ensure that that's completely reversed in the case of Sage, which really means that we need extensive testing. Magma actually has four different types of broken chaotics. <laughs> I think it's, you know, it's, I think it's a much better than three. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same with Parry. I mean, Parry's re revamped the chaotic code numerous times, and it's probably still broken. Even though it's What's a typical way in which these things are broken? Uh, just missing cases. Uh -huh. um, you know, for example, the prime two doesn't work properly. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I mean, um, so like root finding mm -hmm. in Magma is like faults. always, you know, mm -hmm. you know, just, just bugs and code. Really just, like, yeah. okay, really just buggy. Yeah, yeah. really just dodgy stuff. Is it just because people haven't used them enough? These kind of things tend to improve when people use it more. Yeah, but people use it, they realize, that, well, we need to run right all over from scratch again. And so <laughs> more bugs get into it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The thing yeah. is with cats, it's not always easy to check that the answers you're getting are sensible. Yeah. And a lot of mathematicians, when they use chaotics, they don't actually check that their code is from an sensible answers. Mm. Um, and they're not making the assumption that it's not. Yeah. Sure. That's what doctors are for, I suppose. Yep. I mean, I, I've had examples where I've asked the magnet for the roots of a quadratic chaotic polynomial. I've gotten one thing in response. Not more to speak to. One thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my first experience with magma piatics was taking a matrix of a HECA operator over the piatics computing its care poly, and then computing the kernel of each of the matrix substituting each factor, and all the kernels were zero, <laughs> which was kind of frustrating <laughs> because it's using these generic algorithms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas Perry would give them to me correctly, which was kind of nice. Yeah, the kernel, I mean, kernel is harder than the other ones in some sense because. The other ones are just some polynomial of entries, and if you want to get some approximation, you just approximate your yeah. int your uh, entries yeah. by integers, and you take the difficulty. Yeah, kernel has a distinguishing from zero problem. Yeah. Yeah. The answer actually changes whether when, when, if this, if this number which you think is zero actually yeah. isn't zero. So right, you right, have right. To make a guess. You have to make some conventions. Yeah. Yeah, this really annoyed Kevin Buzzard. Like too, right? yeah. 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 I think one of the magma rewrites was precipitated by Kevin complaining a lot about. Uh, linear algebra over the piatics. Um, the but the current code for the base classes is is um, fairly fast. Uh, we beat magma sometimes. Sometimes you don't, but they're comparable in speed. I'd like to hear what people think the, I mean, I've listed a bunch of goals and then these tools that we need to, to get to them. What are the priorities? Um, so I, from William, I've heard a lot of people want extensions yeah. as the first priority. Extensions and, I, and I special functions. That, yes. I think those are the, should be the top two. Extensions, special functions, linear algebra. No, well, special functions before linear algebra. Probably, actually. I don't know. That's kind of a type. I, I, I'm more interested in linear algebra, but overall, I think it's probably better to do stuff with special functions, just because they're more native. They're more organic to piatics, I suppose. Um, what, how special are we talking here? Like just like exactly. Gamma. Yeah, gamma function. Yeah, exactly. What Fernando was alluding to. I would say that piatic factorization of just univariate polynomials is actually very important. Yeah. yeah. Right. Although, I mean. If it's over ZP, you have it from Paris, so you, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you should do things that you don't have from anything first before, before yeah, doing that. You need it yeah. over more but over, yeah. over, over, over other ones, you're right. Yeah, over. absolutely right. Yeah, then, um, that, then that's a very high priority. Yeah, so I think getting round four working over. How hard is that to implement? I don't know. I was looking at Sebastian's. It's, um, it's probably so. a matter of applying for a grant to yeah. get Oh my god. Yeah. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Round four is not the easiest thing. Dang it. So <laughs> something I would really like is, uh, I mean, for me personally, I would like to have the piatics themselves 
be stable and very fast. Like fast to create them, fast to create them. I mean, just I want that code that's already there to be a little more polished and to be doc tested so that I trust it when I use it. Because I, I mean, I love compute with extensions of QP, but really I'd feel much happier about being able to compute with QP and knowing it works first. That's more important to me than, I, I'd rather have fast QP and ZP and just polynomials over those that are slow at first. Or by I think fast, you mean fast and reliable. Yes. Yeah, because it's already fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. fast. So, the, so maybe fast. doc it tests. It might slow. It might slow down a little if it's made right. right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but certain certain things are still like I mean yeah okay. but yeah I mean things like that I mean I, I would actually prefer to see that code get a little more cleaned up and polished personally because I would feel safer using it. They have the reference. Oh, actually, Mark, you can answer it. You're better. Yes, yes they do have tests. And basically, I'm not quite sure whether it actually checks the correctness of the answer. It just I believe it doesn't. Yeah, it only that doesn't cause a runtime error. Yeah, so like they run yeah. through the entire reference manual, yeah. run okay. every input, and check that there are no booms. Yeah. But it doesn't check that the input. Check the input. It, no, yeah. it doesn't check the input. No, I exactly. Mean, because many people have not done things with randomized algorithms to set this. Well, not only really that, I mean, often like the format of the yeah, output so might be a little different. Changes because you want to fit it all in 70 columns. Well, whatever. more often, people often change what the printing format is yes. of something. And so, in fact, the yeah. what's in the reference manual isn't right. Yeah. I mean, that happens to Sage all the time, where you make one little minor change and thousands of you know, outputs are wrong. Uh, so you have to change them all. But People yeah. who submit code should actually, no one be, really does, but they should also submit tests that produce an error when the test fails. Yeah. But for all my code for Magma, I wrote uh, substantial automated testing programs that would do randomized input and then check that the answers are right, and then I'd run them for days um, before releasing the code. But I don't think that they run my programs anymore. I mean, for automated testing. Oh, but the doc test mechanism isn't good for randomized testing. That's right. Because you won't be able it's to. It's a completely check different thing. Yeah. I mean, you could. I suppose you could. You could write something that, as long as it yeah, doesn't actually right. display. Yeah. A ran an output that depends well, on the random. Yeah. It know, could be like a consistency check. It checks some condition and yeah. it should return. Yeah. 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 Or set the seeds. Yeah. Low, low test. It takes, takes longer and it'll just run over lots of random cases. But not in black. Mm -hmm. And then at the, end, yeah. uh, at, the, at the end, you're doing some if so and so equals yeah, so and so. Yeah, checking, so checking it's integrating when you increase the precision. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, GMP does something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of randomized um, testing for modular symbols in Sage right now. There's a whole like class that does it, and it will do it'll do all kinds of calculations of all the modular symbols, and then run consistency checks on dimensions, decompositions, and I often let it run overnight. And it will it will frequently find bugs in linear algebra if there are any. Though it hasn't found any lately, but um, <laughs> nobody's working. Now on it seems to work. Curve. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. We've done a lot of fixes to linear algebra recently. We fixed a lot of major memory leaks, thanks to Michael Abshoff back there and his great use of Valgrind. So planning for Pietics. Yeah, so I've heard a number of suggestions for what the most important thing is, but not a consensus in, on the ordering of that. So <laughs> I don't know. What do you, do you want to do? Yeah. Um, That's what'll happen first. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to write a doc test. I write exactly. <laughs> See, that's the issue. That's why it's not the right question. Um, so uh, I think the reasonable ones to, to be top priority are extensions, um, yeah. getting things more stable, base classes more stable. Um, after that, uh, polynom, I mean, Round four is not something I feel like I can do very easily. Maybe I should talk to Sebastian and see how much free time he has this fall. Um, or see if you can improve Perry's round four. Yeah, but the issue with Perry's round four is if we want to get this working over general extensions. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I see. Um, and then get some sort of. What? Can't you just norm down and then do it over QP and then recover the answer? It's just slower or something? Hmm? Can't you just take the norm? Like, when you want to factor over number fields, you can just reduce to the case of Q and, like, just like that. Standard trick. Sure. 
So you could at least get the answer. It's just a matter of speed, whether, you know. I mean, it's a stopgap implementation, I suppose. It might even be good because you know, if it's really optimized over QP, then yeah. it might actually be pretty competitive yeah. to something you would do. So consider that possibility. That's how you implemented polynomial factorization over number fields for HECA a long time ago. So just it's just in Cohen's book, you know, norm down to Q, factor, and then take a You need to be a little bit careful about something. precision when you do that. Yeah, I'm, I haven't thought about it at all. Yeah, so I'm talking about it. Exactly. But there's probably an answer. About, about a year ago. You could always, you know, throw in a lot of extra bits and you just have to figure out what the right answer was. <laughs> uh, again, separating the computing from the... Exactly. Specific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there... Don't I also want to get some... Uh, but matrix and polynomial code, matrix code in particular, where uh, you can find uh, you can find answers by perturbing things probabilistically. Cool. You can find probabilistic answers by perturbing things um, and get an upper and a lower bound, and have the user be able to pick which one they want to use. So, are, are there books on like you know periodic analysis that are kind of like a numerical methods book for numerical for you know f for real numbers? I don't know. I, I tried looking and I did, haven't found one. It seems like it's ripe to, you know, to, there should be a, a theory <laughs> somehow. Yeah, in fact, I mean, I was, so I, I actually needed some of this for, for a class I'm teaching this semester on piadic differential equations, not for computational purposes, but for uh -huh. actual theorems. Yeah. And I couldn't find anything, huh. so. Actually, that, that's going to be a point I was going to make in my talk. But Excellent. But somehow, <laughs> piadic analysis is, came out at the wrong time in history. <laughs> we don't have the engineers, right? We need to build periodic bridges. They had a periodic bridge in Minneapolis. <laughs> um, I think it's harder because you can say more in the periodic case. Yeah. You can that, really yeah. say exactly what the situation is much harder in, in the real case. Well, it seems like there are a lot of people working on the numerical analysis on the real side because yeah. there are a lot of people that care one about one that one. for There's a huge number reasons. of people. Like, exactly. Whereas there are many fewer people who care about the ethics. So I've basically done, um, in summary, I'd say that the, the next priorities for me and anyone who wants to help out uh, are to um, get extensions working first uh, and then uh, try to stabilize. I mean, uh, try to get more doc tests in. Uh, take this, a bunch of the doc tests that were in the summer and get them into Sage. Um, uh, and then go on and write the easy functions for polynomials and matrices and, uh, and get a piatic kernel working. Um, I mean, how did you automate the piatic factorization polynomials? So I think that's pretty important. I, I needed it recently for something I was doing, and, and it took me ages to implement something in Perry that worked. Wait, so the Perry so one? There is, I mean, there is, is a Perry one that works. In Perry. But it only does it over CP, does it not? Uh, I don't know. Can't you just rescale? And I mean, it's only rescale. Yeah, yeah, but it, it still took a while to. Yeah, but that, that should be automatic. It just should be that. Yeah. The site already do this. Um, it yeah, was in. <laughs> there exists a version of Sage that does this, but uh, I don't think it does currently. It's like right, two point four. Wait, or something. you mean factoring over the periodics, or or you, you know, over QP? QP? Yeah, I mean, there was there was a brief yeah. release in I May mean, sometime. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Magma did this, but then it rescaled wrong and gave wrong answers. Oh, ouch. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> so that's that's a good point. Like, that that shouldn't be that hard. No. Yeah. yeah. To get the rescaling working. Um, and that can go that can go along with the getting just some easy matrix stuff working without worrying so much about details. I'm just curious, how many, raise your hand if you think you could contribute something at all to Piotix and Sage. So, keep these people in Write down names. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you already have, but. All right. Uh.
Thanks a lot. So the next talk will be at one o'clock. And that talk will be Fernando's talk. Yeah, Fernando's talk will be. Let me tell you. I'm just gonna...